We have quorum, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 5.33 this evening. Uh, Brian has volunteered to be the timekeeper from our board. Thank you, Brian. He'll go ahead and make sure we stay on track and hold true to our agenda here today. Um, we're going to go ahead and start off our meeting with the Native American land acknowledgement. So we begin our meeting today by recognizing and acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of the Peoria, Sauk, Meskawaki, Ho-Chunk, and Sioux Nations, and that these traditional territories continue to carry their stories. We have taken on this tradition as a sign of respect for the enduring relationships which exist between the indigenous people and their traditional territories. We have a few housekeeping items today. Let's go to next slide, please. Um, oh, no, the previous is okay. Uh, we have our, we will be doing two votes today. We'll be approving the agenda and last year's minutes. So if you haven't had an opportunity to review last min year's minutes, um, the link is in the presentation above, and you can also find it on the co-op website. This meeting is also being recorded, and so we'll be posting that online as well for record of the meeting today. Um, yes, and then I am Sarah Larson, the board president, as well here today, presenting the welcome. Next slide, please. So this is our first hybrid annual meeting. I think most of our presenters are in the room here at the Middleton Performing Arts Center, and we'll be doing our best to engage with the folks who are joining us online as well. So thank you to those who braved the weather and kind of joined us here today for some good catering from Bunkies and to convene here to hear about how the co-op has done in the last year. We will be doing a short Q&A this as part of the meeting as well, and you'll be hearing from co-op staff responding to those. Any questions that we don't have time to address today you will, be, will be answered either via the co-op reader or via email. So no, if you submitted a question, you will get a response. We just had to limit how many I respond to throughout the meeting today. Next slide, please. This slide shows our agenda for the day today. We, as you can see, we will have our formal meeting and then we're encouraging folks to stay around for some breakout sessions this uh, later today for about 30 minutes and then we'll be closing with a prize drawing. So our first order of business is to go ahead and vote on the agenda. Could I get a motion to approve the agenda? Thank you, Janine. And is there a second? Thank you, Ashwini. Um, can I get a show of hands in the room for those in favor of approving the agenda? Thank you. And then I'm just looking towards the back to see how our online folks are doing. And it looks like I have a thumbs up. The agenda is approved and the motion carries. Thank you all. The second vote we have today is the approval of the 2021 annual meeting minutes. Um, do I have a motion to approve the annual minutes from last year? Thank you. And is there a second? Thank you. All right. And then show of hands for all those who approved the minutes from last year. Thank you. And then I'll just hold for a moment as we monitor the online room for those in favor. All right. I have a thumbs up on that as well. The motion carries and the minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. All right. On to our next slide where I get the pleasure of introducing your current board members. Uh, if I could ask the current board members to just stand and wave. <laughs> Thank you all for your service. Um, we have Anthony who joined our board in 2022 as an interim member um, and previously I served on the access discount committee and really glad to have them join us in 2022. Um, we have Carol and Tatiana who joined us in the last year. Thank you, Tatiana, for being here. And then Ashwini, who has been chairing our board development committee, who joined us in 2020. 
2019, we have these folks whose terms are coming up this year, which is myself, Sarah Larson, Anne Hoyt, and Gigi Godwin. And then our long tenured board members in their second terms of service, Janine and Brian. Brian serves as our treasurer, and Janine has been our board president for multiple years. So thank you, everyone, for your service and all you do for the board. Next slide, please. My, all right, my final role up here is just to further extend our welcome and gratitude to you all for supporting the co-op and for joining us here today. It's amazing to think that this month is the Willie Street Co-op's 48th birthday. It's a long time that Willie Street has been leading the charge for what it means to be a cooperative what it means to be a cooperative in Madison and Middleton, a cooperative with multiple stores, a cooperative that upholds the cooperative principles and key values of equity, diversity, and inclusion, sustainability, and culture. Willie Street is shaped by all of you, our owners, our staff, our volunteers, our partners, and our community. And your support is why we are able to give money back to our communities, to provide a sales outlet for new vendors, diverse under vendors, and growing vendors, provide education and community, and provide a safe and trusted shopping experience. Your values and vision allow us to have the tough conversations we need to have about what we can do better, as well as the inspiring conversations about how we can innovate and further shape this cooperative and determine where we wanna see the co-op in the next five, 10, or 20 years. As you saw, we're having some breakout sessions after the formal part of the meeting to kind of discuss mission, the mission and vision and kind of where we'd like to see, a, see the co-op be in the future. We really encourage you to stay with us here today, whether virtually or in person, to be a part of those conversations. As the board continues their work into 2022, we're really looking at being focused, focused on strategic planning. In 2021, we shared that we were working on setting up a strategic mindset within the board, and we did a lot of work on um, developing strategies and tactics with a step up and through diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're ready to start to activate a facilitator and develop that long-term strategic plan to really shape and drive the vision of the co-op. Within that plan and those priorities and policies, we're really looking at how we can center core values like culture, sustainability, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And finally, we're really looking at ways that we can determine what success is and what success means to us and our owners and our staff. Um, what does it look like to, where do we wanna be and how do we measure that through benchmarks and through different qualitative and quantitative data. So that is the work we're hoping to focus on in 2022. We thank you all for being here and hope you'll engage with us as we do this important work as a community and together. <laughs> Thank you. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass off the mic to Anya, the general manager, to go ahead and move through the year in review. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hello and welcome to this year's annual meeting. Our annual meeting has changed venues a couple times over the last four decades from the Wilmar Neighborhood Center to our 1221 East Side location parking lot to McPike Park and two years ago to a virtual meeting format when the meeting in person was not an option due to the pandemic. We have once again changed venues, this time a hybrid, if you will, offering both in-person and virtual access. The timing of this meeting has also changed along with the board elections to happen this month. Last year, after 12 years of partnering with La Fête de Marquette organizers to host the annual meeting and party on the opening night of the Neighborhood Festival, the board made the decision to separate the annual meeting from the festival and move it to October, taking into consideration weather uh, dis, um, dependencies, lower labor requirements, and to rotate the annual meeting location to within our three store communities to more effectively connect with owners and the use of co-op resources. So here we are tonight in Middleton, where Willie West is located, embarking on a new annual meeting format and tradition. It is a pleasure to be here in person, celebrating our 48th year of being open for business. 
I'd like to give you an update on our diversity, equity, and inclusive, also known as DEI work with Step Up Equity Matters. Two years ago, in 2020, we partnered with Step Up, a, cons a consulting firm to help us change the culture of the co-op to become a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive organization to work and shop. We have moved forward with the recommendations uh, Step Up made following their initial assessment in January 21, 2021, which included review our organization design, leadership team development, develop and increase HR function capabilities, develop bias and microaggression training for all staff, and DEI strategic planning. Next slide, please. Uh, last fall, the management team engaged with Step Up and the board to develop a strategic plan with the DEI focus. We revised our vision, mission, and purpose statements to the following. Vision, WSGC is a local community partner that nourishes a sustainable, accessible, and equitable food system where everyone can participate. Mission, cultivate and empower community, customers, employees, and suppliers through cooperative principles and practices. And purpose, cooperating for a sustainable future. Next slide, please. From there, the management team developed the following goals and objectives. Employee engagement and development goal, with the objectives that our employees reflect the demographics of the communities we serve, and to become an employer of choice through a culture of acceptance, inclusion, and respect. Retail and supply chain goal, uh, uh, with an increased focus on DEI in the co-op's vendor pool and product mix that is aligned with our brand identity while reflecting the communities we serve, and owner and in community engagement goal, with the objective that our customers reflect the demographics of the communities we serve and that the co-op is a place where our community practice or participates and is proud to shop. These goals were assigned to three work groups that are currently developing baseline and aspirational targets for our strategic goals. In the coming year, we will be implementing these work group initiatives, broadening and deepening training opportunities for managers and staff and aligning management and board efforts. Next slide, please. In the, in the last year, we also drafted a DEI statement that captures and defines our commitment to, DD, to DEI, which is the seven cooperative principles that guide our daily work are rooted in equity. Principle one, voluntary open ownership means that we are open to all without gender, social, racial, political, or religious discrimination. Principle seven, concern for the community leads us to work for the sustainable development of our communities. We prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion to reflect our employees, customers, partners, and suppliers, as well as the communities we serve. You can find updates on this important work on our DEI webpage located on our website. Next slide, please. A few operational updates from last year. So last fiscal year, our sales totaled just over $60 million. We employed 365 staff, and we had 32,812 active owners. We remain one of the country's largest consumer co-ops with three retail sites, one production kitchen, and a centralized administrative office. Staffing has been our major challenge and focus over the last year. We were unable to fill all open positions and shifts due to limited applications and only are now beginning to see enough applications to potentially fill all open positions and shifts. That said, due to lower than ideal staffing levels last year, personnel expenses were under budget while sales ran close to budget, which resulted in us earning a profit. When we earn a profit that meets the definition of profit share in the employee handbook, we are required to share with all eligible staff profit share. 
Our profitability last year resulted in an additional 51 cents per hour for all hours paid in the course of the year, including paid time off for qualified staff. Paige will expand upon this as part of the financial update that follows my report. Um, in February, we successfully negotiated our second contract with the UE, the United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America. Our second contract provided all bargaining unit employees with three wage increases over the course of the contract, increasing entry wage to $15 an hour on February 14, 2022, and to $15.80 on September 12, 2022, and to $16.90 an hour on March 13, 2023. This is a total of $3.10 an hour for every hourly employee for the life of the contract. We also agreed to extend paid rest breaks, expand sick paid time off for all bargaining unit employees, providing vacation time to part-time employees, creation of a new sick leave bank, and implementation of a slip resistant footwear program for all eligible bargaining unit employees. For non bargaining unit employees, we completed our annual market rate uh, analysis last spring, which resulted in several wage adjustments. We also provided a 4% COLA uh, increase in addition to our annual performance based increases. And here are a few updates about the retail. Last year, we evaluated our prepared foods made to order programs at the retails, and we made the tough decision to end made to order offerings for the time being. We centralized our juice production program at our West location to support improved consistency, production, and labor efficiency. This new program is going well, and my compliments to the team for making this happen. Last fiscal year, we completed a reset at Willie West. One of the refrigerated cheese cases was turned 90 degrees, which opened up the sight lines to make the cheese and beer and wine departments more visible. And it looks marvelous. We just completed a remodel and reset at Willie East with the removal of the juice and co coffee bar counter. The new space where the juice and coffee bar was is now home to expanded pack packaged grocery offerings. If you have not been to Willie East in a while, I recommend you check it out. Remerchandising or remodeling any section of the store requires a collaborative effort of many staff to design and execute the plan. My compliments to those involved in the most re recent work done at West and East. We have a couple more planned projects this year. One is at our north location, which is to remodel two public bathrooms into three gender neutral bathrooms and to open up the break, the staff break room area. We anticipate this work to start early in the calendar year. And another is to install four self checkouts at Willie West. We believe these efforts will offer the customer options at the checkout, especially for those folks who have small baskets and want to just get in and get out. Beyond that, we will continue to evaluate the retail operation and to develop plans to support the changing needs of our owners, customers, and staff. Last spring, we started working with DAMA, Dane Arts Mural Arts, to install a community painted mural at Willie West. Themes for the mural were suggested by staff, concept designs were generated by DAMA artists based on those themes, and then owners and customers voted on their preferred concept. The selected mural design, local and native species, was finalized by DAMA artists and collectively painted by owners and customers um, at various events late this summer. The finished work is being installed this week and will be dedicated to the community on Friday, October 14th at noon, and I can't wait to see it. In 2016, we installed an array of solar panels on our east location in partnership with Legacy Solar Co-op. This partnership offered our rooftop as a location for the array that we would in, in return purchase outright after five years. 
Last spring, we purchased the array of panels per the buyout agreement. We also added to our website a sustainability dashboard report that offers an update on our sustainable performance for you to review. If you are curious, check it out. We carried on the tradition of giving back to the community through our Community Reinvestment Fund program. In 2022, we awarded $35,000 to grant recipients which grew our total giving to $538,000 since the inception of the program in 1992. Last spring, Willie Street Co-op hosted for the third year the up and coming Food Co-op Conference. This event is designed to provide resources, expertise, and networking opportunities for startup co-ops, their boards, and their leadership teams. This event is a great example of the cooperative principle six, cooperation among co-ops in action. The conference will be hosted in Minneapolis in 2023. Before I introduce Paige, our next speaker, I wanna offer my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to the board, our staff, and to you, our owners. Willie Street Co-op is governed by a nine member board of directors who are elected to represent you. I want to thank the current board for their time, energy, and expertise for overseeing the governance of the co-op. Willie Street Co-op employs 365 people. We have an amazing team of people who work for and manage the operations of the co-op. I want to thank and recognize all our staff. Our staff show up to work every day to ensure we are open for business, and they are simply amazing. And finally, Willie Street Co-op is owned by over 32,000 people. I want to thank you all for your support and loyalty throughout the last year. You are why we are here tonight. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Paige Wickline, Director of Finance. Thank you, Anya. I loved hearing your update, including the work we've been doing with our consultant Step Up to embed diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, into the culture at Willie Street. Anya shared some DEI highlights, and I'd like to share with you how different it is for me on a personal level working at Willie Street today compared to how it was before we began our DEI journey. Next slide. In the present, not a day goes by where I don't hear a discussion around unconscious bias and how we need to look at both our individual and organizational bias as it relates to a decision or action. Not a day goes by where I don't hear at least once how we need to review a decision or process from an equity perspective. You may ask, what is an equity perspective? I've learned an equity perspective includes asking some critical questions, such as who will be most burdened by this decision and who will benefit the most, along with asking, does our intent match the potential impact from this decision or action? How will this impact our staff, our owners, shoppers, business partners, and community members? When we started this journey, our consultant would bring these questions to our attention. I'm happy to report that having an equity perspective is slowly becoming embedded in our daily work here where co-op management is focused on DEI without having to be prompted by an external consultant. And finally, not a day goes by where I don't pause to reflect upon the impact my words and actions have on moving our DEI goals forward. From the outside, you may not see many changes, but from where I sit, our culture is shifting. And I'm so grateful to have the honor of working in an environment where a DEI perspective is encouraged and supported. Just this week, one of our new managers shared five reasons why they're excited to be working at Willie Street. Next slide. This is what they shared after working at the co-op for one week. One, the co-op has a positive impact on the community. 
Two, the employees are all very friendly and helpful. Three, the work that is done here is important. Four, the company has a diversity inclusion mindset. And five, I believe I can make a difference. In addition to our DEI work, Anya mentioned how we have expanded our sustainability efforts, including developing a dashboard that is on our website reporting on our sustainability practices. Each of us can make a difference as we work together towards our vision of what we want to become, which is, next slide, a local community partner that nourishes a sustainable, accessible, and equitable food system where everyone can participate. Next slide. I wanna talk a little bit about the triple bottom line. So how did we do this past year? From a financial aspect, our co-op thrived. We've always looked at our future from a triple bottom line perspective. Not only do we consider profits and profitability, but we also consider the impact of our decisions and the work we do on people and the environment. Our ongoing efforts to implement our DEI strategies and expand our reporting on our sustainability practices will allow us to improve and expand on how we inform you of our efforts towards our bottom line as they relate to profits, our staff, and folks in our community, and the sacred land our stores are located on, known as Dejope by the Ho-Chunk Nation. Next slide. For the fiscal year that ended on July 3rd, 2022, we sold $60.5 million in groceries. That's over $1 million in sales every week of the year. One third of the items we sell are from local vendors, producers, and farmers. After paying for the cost of the items we sold, we had $22 million of margin dollars or gross profit. Next slide. Of the $22 million in gross profit, 14.4 million was spent on wages and benefits for staff, and 6.6 .6 million was spent on operating expenses. Operating expenses include costs we incur to run our co-op, such as rent, utilities, repairs, and maintenance. Our income from operations came in at $1.04 million. Next slide. We also have other income and expenses that are not directly related to gro selling groceries. Other income includes interest income on deposits we have at financial institutions, patronage dividends we receive from other co-ops that we belong to, along with sales commissions for third-party sales from our sushi vendor. Other expenses include interest expense on the bonds our owners have purchased support to support past expansions, and the loan we have at Summit Credit Union that is secured by real estate. We own the building and land at our East location, and the property is used as collateral, which allows us to obtain a lower interest rate on a loan when we need to borrow funds for expanding our business. Our other income and expense total, totaled a net other income of $0.13 million. Our net income before provision for income taxes is $1.17 million. And as a percent of sales, it was 1.19%. We had budgeted for net income before provision for income taxes of $29,000 or basically breaking even. This unexpected net income variance compared to our budget was primarily due to personnel costs being under budget by 1.1 million. Those costs were under budget due to labor hours being less than anticipated beginning in September of 2021 through January of 2022. Like most employers, Willie Street encountered what is now called by many the Great Resignation. Beginning in the fall of 2021, where we experienced higher turnover than we had in the past, along with experiencing fewer job seekers. This time period was difficult for everyone, for the staff, the managers, and our owners, and we are glad to allocate some of our profits as profit share to compensation for staff. Next slide. 
Our profit share policy allows profits to be shared with staff on a quarterly basis, where a net income for the quarter is greater than 1% of sales. In quarter one, our net income was less than 1% of sales, so we did not have any profit share in quarter one. In quarter two, we paid out $94,077 in profit share, which ended up at 70, 72 cents per hour worked. Full-time staff at 40 hours a week received a check of $376. In quarter three, we paid out $27,733 in profit share, which ended up to be 20 cents per hour worked. Full-time staff at 40 hours received a check of $104. And at year end, we paid out $241,728 in profit share at 51 cents per hour worked for the year. For staff who were employed the entire year at 40 hours per week, their profit share check was $1,060. For those that worked more hours than 40 hours, their, their checks were larger. If they worked fewer hours than 40 hours, their checks were lower. And the total profit share for full-time staff for the year was $1,540. Next slide. When co-ops have a profit at the end of the fiscal year, they may distribute the owner's share of the profit back to the owners in the form of a patronage refund. These profits are distributed in direct proportion to a co-op owner's patronage or purchases and is made up of retained patronage equity and a store credit. Next slide. We will be distributing 997,107 of our profits back to our owners. $199,416 will be distributed as a store credit that owners will be able to use at the register and the remaining $797,681 will be held by Willie Street as retained patronage equity. We'll be sharing out the details regarding the individual amounts of store credit and the timing of when they'll be available at our retail locations in the near future. We had a successful year financially where we were able to share profits with staff and our owners. All of us Hopefully that's helping all of us thrive. Next, I would like to introduce to you Ann Hoyt, our board vice chair, who will introduce you to the board candidates. This isn't mine, I just brought it up by accident. Um, hello, that was a wonderful report that Paige gave and also Anya's, and I'd like to have you all give them a round of applause for them and the whole staff. <laughs> We're very pleased about uh, being able to offer profit sharing and a patronage refund, um, and to have a successful year after several very difficult years. It's my pleasure to introduce the candidates for the Board of Directors for this year's election. And the first, oh, first I have to tell you about it. Um, the first one, the first thing to know is that there are seven candidates running for four positions that are open. We had one uh, uh, director resign during the year, and then we have the three directors that are up for election this year. Two directors have chosen to run again, and then we have two seats open. So this is a interesting year, and I think we have a really good slate of candidates for you. So the first candidate is Isabel Spooner Harvey. Isabel, are you here? Uh, she is not here, so uh, please read her candidate statement. I've been reading the statements to get ready to uh, introduce these folks. And I think we have a really good slate of candidates. So please read those candidate statements. The second um, candidate is Anthony Hernandez. And Anthony is here. And come, Anthony, and um, introduce yourself.
all the lights are really bright up here. I wasn't expecting that. But it's, uh, it's good to see everybody who's here. And I also want to thank the folks who are following along online. And so I, I, I've been working with uh, Willie Street Co-op for years. I've been an owner. And as I was listening to the financial report, I was thinking, this is the same thing that I teach my students who are preparing to become leaders. I teach at, the, at a big mid Midwestern university in town. And so we talk about things like equity and diversity and inclusive excellence. And my greatest wish for all of them is that when they go out into their respective fields, that they can be these types of leaders. And I was thinking to myself, if I was sitting in the bucket seat there, how proud I am of the good work that we've been doing at Willie Street Co-op. We actually uh, are doing the work, we're modeling the behavior. We are an inspiration for a lot of organizations around this country. Uh, I've been working, like I said, for a couple of years. I am now an interim board member. And when I was asked to be an interim board member, really it was about the people that I knew who were on the board and the good work that I'd seen them do when I served in other positions at Willie Street Co-op. It was on the Access Discount Committee, and that was my first experience. I had just come out of the Hope Lab where I was working on material hardship and housing insecurity issues. And it was a real pleasure to come into Willie Street for the first time and just see the professionalism and the genuine passion that was exhibited by the people who were on that committee. And when I got a chance to go on the reinvestment, uh, Community Reinvestment Fund Committee, uh, again, it was some of the same folks uh, doing really good work, and I had to pinch myself. I couldn't believe that I was fortunate enough to do this kind of work in the community. But I've, I've always been working in the community in one way or another. Uh, here in Madison, I designed, a, I co-designed a mentoring program for undocumented students who have aspirations for college. And I've been working for, with undocumented students ever since I lived in Arizona for about 10 years now. And I also worked with a group called From Gangs to Jobs. And I think the title pretty much explains itself but young men who are coming out of the carceral system and trying to regain their momentum by earning academic credentials and connecting with jobs. And then I also worked in a similar nonprofit uh, for women who are coming out of the carceral system in Arizona. So when I, when I think about my professional work at places like the Wisconsin Hope Lab or working in nonprofits in the community, one of the things that guides my thinking is I imagine a circle of compassion with nobody standing outside of it. And it was the actor Jesse Williams, actor activist, who said that you should be able to point to the things you do and that it should reflect your values. And so I'm an equity minded leader. And when you look at the work that I've done, it reflects that I've been pursuing justice and equity. And as was said here earlier, I think a lot about the people who aren't in the room and a lot of folks who have been muted. So I really love what I do on the board now. I have a good understanding of what's going on there, and I think I'm a perfect fit for it. I would really appreciate your vote so that I can continue to do the good work that Willie Street, Willie Street is doing in the community. Thank you so much. It was nice to see you. Thank you, Anthony. Anthony has been a, um, a good board member to have in his interim role, and we're pleased that he's running. And then next is Gigi Godwin. Gigi is not here tonight because she was exposed to COVID and she was very distressed that she couldn't be here with you tonight to introduce herself. She has served on the board for three years and is running again. So um, to help her, um, to assuage her dismay, I would say, I said, GC, I will present part of your candidate statement for you so that the people at the meeting will know something about you. So Gigi, you can read um, her statement about how she started at the co-op and how she feels about it. But she also would say, for me, board committee work has been both, both fulfilling and fruitful. During my board, I'm being Gigi now, during my board of director tenure, I served on the Co-op's Community Reinvestment Fund Committee in 2021 and again this year. In 2017 and 2019, I was on the Co-op's Access Discount Program Committee as an owner at large. This important program provides owners who have financial need a 10% discount on their groceries and other co-op items. In 2019, I was part of a fair share of CSA Coalition's Food Access Committee. 
Our group expanded the framework of Fair Shares Partner Shares program. Uh, also, this year, I was asked to join Group Health Cooperative of South Central Wisconsin's Member Advisory Council. This council facilitates member representation to GHCSCW in order to provide input and feedback on improving patient care and insurance services. Willie Street Co-op depends on a board that understands strategic planning, fiduciary responsibility, and policy governance. And into my third year, I feel that I have merely dipped my toes into those analytical waters because I want the co-op to have a bright, long-term future and to remain viable and thrive I would welcome the opportunity to take a deeper dive. Thank you from Gigi. And our next, um, she's watching on, uh, you know, she's in a virtual meeting here and she'll appreciate that. And our next candidate is Ike Ross. Is Ike here? Good. Hello, everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity here today to introduce myself. I am Ike Ross. I call the Northside store my home. Uh, five years ago, I moved to the state of Wisconsin. Um, and since day one, I've been a public servant working for the state. Um, I'm excited to pursue this opportunity specifically because it gives me the chance to uh, serve the local community and integrate myself a little bit more within that local community in the greater Madison area. Um, I've got a history of farm work. My first job was on an alpaca farm back home in Michigan. Uh, when I went to college, I had the opportunity to work on a conventional farm. We farmed alfalfa for the livestock that was on campus. And in addition to that, I volunteered on the campus's organic farm, and I did some research into vermicomposting uh, as an undergraduate. And, and that's composting with worms, for those who don't know, and it is incredibly exciting. Um, I have a background in science. Uh, my technical training is as a geologist, so I really value the technical inputs and using those types of information to make informed decisions. Um, and in addition to that, I currently participate on a management team at my current employment, so I'm no stranger to the, uh, you know, the collective decision-making apparatus that is the board of directors here. Um, overall, I think that that background gives me a unique set of skills and an interesting experience that I'm hopeful to bring to the board and further, um, you know, use those and further serve the, the co-op as a whole. So thank you very much. And thank you for your interest in being a member of the board of directors. And our next candidate is Bill, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Wolgamuth. Is Bill here? Then he won't correct me, I guess. And moving on. Giving you a chance to read his statement. Shall we move on? And our next uh, candidate is Sarah Larson, who you've already seen tonight. Sarah? Hello, everyone, again. Um, my first term of the co-op has is expiring and I have chosen to run again. So I thank you for your consideration. Um, I feel like just echoing a lot of what we heard previously, it's been really inspiring and motivating to see the co-op kind of come through the challenges of the last couple years. And I'd really love the opportunity to continue to move some of that work forward through strategic planning and visioning. In my day job, I work with food and farm businesses across the nation, really looking at how to center food and agriculture economic development in communities. And I really love being a part of that here in Madison, Wisconsin. So I thank you for considering me for the election.
Thank you, Sarah. And thank you for running again. And the next candidate is Jamie Schubert. Is Jamie here? No, I don't think so. And we have one more. No, so it's my pleasure to introduce Christina, who is going to lead uh, in your um, question and answer opportunities. If you have any questions for any of us, please don't hesitate to ask. Hi, my name is Christina Kuhabt. Um, I'm the customer experience manager. I started about six months ago, um, but have been an owner for several years. So I'm gonna take you through our owner questions. The first one is, um, why does the co-op continue to use telecheck to process our checks? Several years ago, the co-op started using telecheck services to process the checks for all our retail locations. Telecheck is a service which our current credit card processing service uses and functions with the equipment we own. The reason we choose the service was to address the excessive non-sufficient funds and fraudulent checks we were experiencing prior to partnering with Telecheck. This decision was made because it was no longer viable for the co-op to continue allowing this to happen or make check handling exceptions. Currently, we are no longer able to make exceptions to hold a check if it does not go through telecheck service due to their algorithm and one's personal bank account limits because we strive to treat each and every co-op customer and owner equally and fairly on how we process their funds financially. Our suggestion is to get in touch with your bank to put a note about telecheck on your account so that future co-op transactions may be approved easier. In addition, a debit card through your bank would help aid in funding, um, provided it was declined. Thank you for your question. Our next question is more of a statement, um, but we try to address it it's through panhandling. The statement is, I love the co-op, but the panhandling needs to stop. I've been consistently verbally harassed, had food thrown at my car, and no one seems to do anything about it. I shop at several other local stores and there are no panhandlers there. I have complained countless times and nothing ever changes. We, um, our responses are, we encourage owners and customers to come inside our premises if they feel uncomfortable, unsafe and or experiencing disorderly conduct. Please report the issue to the staff at the front desk. If we cannot resolve the issue or intercede for this customer, the police will be alerted. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce Anya, who will take over the next questions. Thank you. All right, I was asked to address two questions. Uh, one um, is Willie South. And the question is, are there any plans to build a Willie South, thinking Fitchburg or Verona? Not at this time. A fourth store would be part of our strategic planning process to figure out if and when it might be feasible. And my next question is automated lanes. What are plans relating to adding automated lane, uh, checkout lanes? Will this be coming to all three stores and what is that rationale? We got the idea of installing checkout registers from another co-op. We thought it would improve the customer experience at Willie West by offering this as an option for those checking out. We worked with the UE to address their concerns in terms of staffing and agreed to an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding. As I said in my report, we plan to convert two registered lanes to four self-checkout lanes early in the new calendar year. We are piloting these at Willie West and the installation at another site would be based only on a positive evaluation of the project at West. And I want to introduce Alyssa Hartman to answer, I think, the next three questions. 
Yes, I have the remaining three that were submitted. My name is Alyssa Hartman. I'm Director of People and Culture. I've been with the co-op about a year and a half now in HR for 24 years. Uh, the first, next question submitted was, how will you provide material support to the workers of Willie Street Co-op and their union, UE 1186? Not exactly sure what you mean by material support, but I'll answer what I think you're asking for that. Uh, our second collective bargaining agreement that we negotiated in place with the UE effective in March of 2022 outlined support we provide in a variety of different ways. So in terms of pay increases, as Anya indicated, there are three scheduled for the life of the contract between March of 2022 and March of 2024. Also, as she noted, there were improvements and uh, increases to pay time off. We were able, we've been able for two years now to maintain our extremely rich medical uh, insurance plan with no changes to our plan design or the benefits. We offer additional benefits to employees. We were able to expand some of those benefits to part-time employees in addition to full-time employees. And we made some changes that uh, increased our focus on employee safety, such as the slip resistant footwear program that Anya mentioned. The next question is regarding COVID related sick time. Uh, will the co-op continue to pay for sick time for employees that get COVID? We've had multiple temporary agreements in place with the union for more than two years now during the pandemic. And those temporary agreements have provided for paid leave for COVID related reasons. The latest temporary agreement uh, that we negotiated in August of this year uh, expired on October 8th. Uh, we did send a proposed new temporary agreement to the union prior to the expiration date, uh, proposing to continue paid vaccination leave, so time to get uh, back COVID vaccination and recover from side effects of vaccination as well as continue to provide options for personal leave and expanded FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act. We've not yet received a response to that proposal, but welcome any negotiation and discussion with them about continuing those provisions. The, second, or the last question that we had submitted was is similar and related to COVID. How will the co-op be handling COVID for employees going forward? Uh, we will continue to follow guidance from Public Health of Madison and Dane County regarding testing and isolation guidelines, as we have throughout the pandemic. We have provisions in the collective bargaining agreement for sick time, and we also added a new uh, clause specifically related to excused absences for reportable communicable illnesses such as COVID. That concludes the questions that were submitted in advance, and I will ask Anthony to come back up for the next portion. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony. I'm one of the board members. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be up here now uh, to announce the awards, the prizes. And I also want to say that uh, Gigi would have been here. She was going to do this. And she's one of the people that makes it a real pleasure uh, to work at the Willie Street Co-op. So I hope she feels better soon. So the winners, uh, I just want to let people know that the winners who are joining online will be emailed to find out in which store they'd like to pick up their prizes. And if you don't receive an email or have questions, please contact Brendan Smith, and uh, that's b.smith at willystreet.coop, or give us a call at 608-237-1213. I'm just going to repeat that one more time for the folks who are online. Sometimes I speak a little fast. I want to make sure everybody gets that information. So if you do win and you're online, please email us at b.smith at willystreet.coop or give us a call at 608-237-1213. So now I can feel the suspense building. It's really, everybody's pretty excited. I see a lot of smiles out there. That's really great. So here we are, first round of prize drawings. And the winner is third prize. Look at that. You don't even know yet, do you? Okay, so $50 for a coop. Uh-oh. We, we just roll with the punches and push through with positivity. <laughs> we really wanted to make you wait. So now, here we go. 
Nancy Goins. Is Nancy here tonight? Nancy, congratulations. Good for you. I'm happy for you. And you know, one of the things that I would buy if I won would be the vegan nothing muffin, which I think is undefeated in the Willie Street Bakery, but that's a personal opinion. Okay, so that's uh, up next then, we have another winner. Second prize, a $100 Coop gift card to Megan Gager. Is, is she here today? Megan? So please be, uh, if you're not here and you do win, please be in contact with us at b.smith at willystreet.coop or give us a call at 608-237-1213 and Brendan will hook you up. So congratulations on that win. Okay, now we have the grand prize, the big daddy. We're gonna see what's gonna happen now. First prize is to Liz Dominguez. Is Liz here? Hey, congratulations, Liz. There you go. So that's, uh, we want to thank all of the winners and everybody who participated. It's been a real pleasure working with all of you. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, Brendan is going to be your contact person. If you can't get through, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you also spend that money on a vegan muffin. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, up next, Ashwini, please. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Ashwini Rao, and I'm the chair of the Board Development Committee. Um, one of our jobs is to put on this annual meeting, so thank you for coming. We really appreciate your participation. Um, please stick around. Uh, there would be another prize drawing at the end. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is, in our quest for strategic planning and, uh, and, and an attempt to hear from the owners, we would like to break this group up. There will be a similar exercise, in, uh, exercise taking place online, but we'd like to break this group up into two. Uh, one to discuss the vision and one to discuss the mission. And it'll be a 30 minute discussion, very quick. But within that, we are going to be talking about three different questions. What are we doing well? Where should we be improving? And what should we be discontinuing? So with that, um, the vision folks, if you want to discuss the vision, please move to the side um, of the theater, I guess. And those who want to discuss the mission, go to the back of the soundboard. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, thank you all for your input. I know that the board will uh, and management will look at your thoughts uh, and consider them carefully. And we appreciate all of you and your participation both here and online. And of course, that now means that it's time for the second drawing for prizes. And I think that Anthony went over the who to contact if you want information about how to get your prize if you're uh, not here in the meeting. And we can go over that one more time. Uh, contact, it's very hard to see from here, bsmith at willystreet.coop or 608-237-1213. So I'm ready to announce the second round of prize winners. And the third prize for a $50 co-op gift card goes to Tristan Lorenzo. Are you here? No. And the second prize for $100 co-op gift card goes to Laura Van Toll. Congratulations, Laura and Kristen. And the third prize, first prize, <laughs> the third one coming up and it's the first prize, $250 co-op gift card to Hallie Huser. And Hallie is here, yay. She's been taking pictures of us all evening. Congratulations. All right, and thank you all for coming to the annual meeting. As you know, this is the first time we've done a, a um, hybrid meeting, and we would certainly entertain your comments about doing it again and how to do it. And we appreciate your interest in your shopping at the co-op and your support of the co-op. And with that, I have the honor of asking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion? Um, there was Anya who moved to adjourn, and I think Janine moved to second. So all those in favor of adjourning the meeting signify by saying aye. Let's do a great big aye. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.